What if there's a neuroscience-based protocol that 10x the amount you're achieving while completely eradicating your body's ability to feel stress? Now, I'm Rian Doris, co-founder and CEO of the Flow Research Collective. Along with my partner, Stephen Kotler, we've taught thousands of professionals how to access flow states at will. Here's a question for you. Who'd you lift a car if your child was pinned beneath it? Well, back in 1982 in Lawrenceville, Georgia, Angela Cavallo's teenage boy Tony was working on his 64 Chevy Impala in the driveway. Suddenly, the thing slips right off the jack and lands on top of him. Little 11-year-old Johnny Edwards saw it happen and ran to tell his mother, Angela. She sprinted outside without thinking, started trying to lift that massive car. Here's the thing, that Impala weighed almost 3,300 pounds, but Angela somehow found the superhuman strength to raise up the rear of that one and a half ton beast. She was screaming at her son to try and pull himself out from under the car, but her son wouldn't budge. He was completely out cold. Then she told Johnny to get the neighbors. Now here's the crazy thing. She didn't just lift the car for a few seconds. She held it up for five minutes. Finally, a couple of guys came and got the jack back under the car so Tony could slide out alive. The kid got away in the end with just a few bruises. Angela was sore all over for a few days, but otherwise in good shape. And mind-blowing feats of strength like this happen more often than you'd think. There's the 22-year-old girl who lifted a BMW off her dad, and the 15-year-old boy who raised a one-ton Buick off his grandpa. And who could forget the 120-pound woman who fought off a 700-pound polar bear to protect her son? Well, what's happening in these stories and countless others is a phenomenon called hysterical strength. Hysterical strength refers to a display of extreme physical strength by humans, way beyond what is believed to be normal. Usually, it occurs when people are in or perceive themselves to be in these life or death situations. During a stressful, adrenaline-fueled situation, the body's pain sensitivity drops, as suggested by the injuries incurred that are only noticed after the event. The phenomenon of hysterical strength points us to something fascinating about humans. Humans can handle way, way more than we think we can handle, and not just a bit more, infinitely, inconceivably more. And the good news is, you don't have to be in a life or death situation to tap into the cognitive equivalent of hysterical strength. As a modern professional who gets paid for their knowledge, the feats you take on are cognitive, not physical. There are no limits to what mental load you can lift. There's a way you can handle 10 to 100 times the number of duties, decisions, and consequences you currently do. And best of all, you can perform at an elite level within this massively increased responsibility. The question is how? Well, the solution is contained within what's known as the flow channel, which is sometimes referred to as the challenge skills balance, one of flow's main triggers. When the difficulty is hard enough to engage you, but matches your abilities so you can handle it. Hungarian-American psychologist Mihai Csikszentmihalyi first discovered the flow channel in the 1970s. When in the flow channel, people often lose track of time and become absorbed in what they're doing. Csikszentmihalyi identified two states outside the flow channel, boredom below it and anxiety above it. Boredom occurs when the challenge of a task is too low for your skill level, causing you to seek higher challenges. Anxiety occurs when the difficulty of a task is too high for your skill level, leading to feelings of stress and unease. So the flow channel works by maintaining a balance between these two states. The wider your flow channel, the more opportunities you have to get into flow. That means you have more opportunities to perform at a high level in more situations, including under conditions that would previously overwhelm you. The problem many people have is they think you can't get into flow when things are too stressful or overwhelming. But in reality, you can't get into flow because you haven't properly expanded your flow channel, the total scope within which you can achieve flow state. With a narrow flow channel, you can only access flow in limited ways under ideal conditions. Often this means you can't get into flow whenever life is stressful. And because of this narrow flow channel, life feels stressful to you at a level that's infinitely below where it could feel stressful, which, as the examples of hysterical strength demonstrate, leaves lots of potential on the table for you. Imagine going skiing at a resort that only has one run that you can actually handle. When you're a beginner skier, you can only get into flow on very specific, simple, easy runs. And it's similar to our professional life. We can only get into flow when we have just the right amount of a certain type of work on our plate. But as soon as a bit too much comes on, we're catapulted into stress and anxiety. Thankfully though, we can actually widen the flow channel and access the whole mountain in two ways. The first 
is by lowering our baseline for boredom. The second is by increasing our capacity to handle challenge. The optimal blend for flow is when you are hard to bore, yet also hard to make anxious. When you lower your baseline for boredom, more activities will stimulate you. So instead of finding stimulation through things like social media and junk food, you get it from extremely dense work. For now though, we're gonna focus on the top half of the flow channel, increasing your capacity and thus making it less likely you'll experience anxiety. The result is you'll be able to handle more and more on your plate while still being able to drop into flow state. Intuitively, we tend to take on challenges that only slightly exceed our skill level, since this is what puts us in that sweet spot for flow. As you do this, you do gradually and incrementally widen the flow channel. But here's the thing, there's a way you can explode the flow channel. Exploding the flow channel means rapidly expanding your capacity so you can thrive under extreme conditions that previously would have overwhelmed you and kicked you out of flow. Now I saw a crazy example of this when I was young on a trip to Croatia. The local parents used a strangely good technique for teaching their kids how to swim. I remember watching a father carry his five-year-old out on a barnacle covered pier extending into the Adriatic Sea. But in one motion, the dad flung the boy over the pier's edge. His shriek was engulfed by crashing waves as he hit the water. However, after minutes of frantic splashing, the child began to paddle in circles. Above on the pier, the father laughed and clapped, proud of his son for swimming. This is what it's like to explode the flow channel. Exploding the flow channel is about forcing yourself to learn to swim so you don't drown, and that's the risk. The risk is real, but you also get the potential upside of learning to swim in minutes rather than in months. So what's happening here is an example of the external flow trigger, high consequences taken to the extreme. Research shows that flow state has these validated preconditions that cause it to emerge. As action sports athletes can attest, high consequences are a particularly potent external trigger for driving us into a flow state. A high consequence environment demands that we summon a higher degree of skill and focus than what is typically required. And here's the key. Your biology has a responsibility that kicks in when you take on more responsibility. And as soon as you do this, it leads to an explosion of your flow channel. The problem, is that most people never come close to maxing this out and discovering what they're actually capable of. Their hysterical strength is never called forth, so their flow channel remains narrow, which means their opportunities for peak performance are limited to conditions of low responsibility. For example, even though they'd love to build a business, they maybe remain stuck as an employee because anything outside of that role causes just enough stress to overwhelm them instead of enhancing their performance. This happens because a low enough stress level causes us to recoil but sometimes inconceivably higher levels of stress expand our flow channel. But if you don't put those conditions in front of your physiology, you've got nothing to adapt to. In all of the cases of hysterical strength that we mentioned, that strength wouldn't have been possible if the car hadn't fallen on her son. It's paradoxical, but you can only handle more responsibility once you are overloaded with it. You can't handle it preemptively. Your biology doesn't serve up those resources until it absolutely needs them. You can only run the business you dream of running once you're running it. You don't develop the trait before doing the thing. You develop the trait by doing the thing. You can think of this as evolution in a microcosm. The evolved traits and expanded flow channel come only after the challenging circumstances. I first experienced a flow channel explosion when I was in college. I was age 22 and I was forced to expand my capacity. I got the biggest break of my life where I got to co-found a neuroscience-based peak performance training institute with New York Times best-selling author Stephen Kotler, who I'd been a die-hard fan of for years. In 18 months, I went from being a student in Ireland sweating bullets about having to pass some microscopic trivial exam to leading a team of nearly 50 people as CEO, suddenly responsible for a dozen families carrying roughly half a million dollars of monthly salaries on my back. Now, if you had told my 22-year-old self that this would happen, I would have freaked out. Being handed that level of responsibility would instantly overwhelm me. Just months before, I would have assumed that it would take years and years for me to build up to being able to handle that level of burden. And I never would have thought I could get into flow with this new load of responsibility. But all of a sudden, only after being forced to do so, I had no choice but to unlock the cognitive equivalent of hysterical strength a capacity that I didn't know I had laying dormant in there to rise to meet the challenge. And counterintuitively, my opportunities for flow and peak performance increased with less stress because of this increased responsibility load. What had happened was that the top of my flow channel, the upper ceiling, where I would normally tilt into anxiety and pop out of flow, had elevated 
The range of experiences and activities that used to overwhelm me now intensified my focus and performance. I could suddenly handle double black diamond ski runs. Why does our biology respond to challenge in this way by serving up incredible additional capacity we don't know is lying there dormant the whole time? Well, there's two reasons why we're able to get this short-term explosion in capacity. First, there's the stress ceiling. You see, stress doesn't increase linearly with responsibility. Humans have an upper limit to how much stress they can feel and how much cortisol can even be in the bloodstream. If you take on a thousand times more responsibility than you have now, you're not physically capable of taking on a thousand times more stress. Think of entrepreneurs like Elon Musk running multiple billion dollar companies at once. It's not that they don't feel stress, but there is a limit to the amount our minds and bodies can experience simultaneously. More cognitive workload and responsibility does not mean proportional more stress, cognitive and hedonic adaptation. We quickly adapt to new stimuli until they become our baseline norm. What once felt like pressure eventually just feels standard. It's like living near train tracks. At first, the roar of each train is jarring, but over time, your brain filters out the noise. Soon the rumble soothes you to sleep. Back when I was 22, leaping from college to a CEO role in 18 months, Due to the stress ceiling, I inverted what I once experienced in college. Even though my responsibility level was now pushing the ceiling, my stress levels were still barely off the floor, and I was able to access flow state and succeed in a role that had previously been unfathomable. The next thing that happens when circumstances force our biology to explode the flow channel is we crack open our resilience reservoirs. In the examples of hysterical strength, these reservoirs were response speeds and raw physical strength, but you have untapped cognitive resilience reservoirs that once accessed, allow you to handle way more than what you think you can handle right now. These resilience reservoirs are invisible to you until pried open by circumstance, by sheer necessity. You can see this with the Navy SEAL Hell Week training, where recruits face over 200 miles of running, disorienting sleep deprivation, and cold water immersion where they must immerse themselves in frigid ocean water pre-dawn and then roll in the sand, creating a chafing, abrasive layer on their skin while teetering on the brink of hypothermia. And here's the thing. In the process, the recruits realized that their perceived limits were just 30% of what's truly possible. With enough intensity and the flow trigger high consequences, the human spirit summons astounding resilience reservoirs. The key point is that the SEAL trainees couldn't complete even half of these ordeals in a regular gym workout. You can't do Hell Week outside of Hell Week. Urgent context forces and cracks open your latent resilience reservoirs. As William James, the founder of modern psychology once said, the human individual usually lives far within their limits. Most never experience their spirit's full force. So how do we actually do this? What are the practical steps to pull this off and explode the flow channels? Well, think back to a time when you had one of those really heavy backpacks on your back for a little while. And remember how, after you take it off, it suddenly feels like you can jump twice as high. You feel really light afterwards. That's what we're going for. To tap into your dormant resilience and expand your capacity, there are three steps. Step one is overload. Step two is adapt. Step three is deload. First, overload yourself take on an inconceivable amount more than you're handling right now. This intense overloading forces an explosion of your flow channel. Now, when overloading, we're saying to go through a discrete phase where you tend to 100x the load you're carrying right now to a degree that maybe even feels unfathomable or insane. Similar to the woman who lifted the car, it should feel like it might take you years to be ready to pull off this overload phase. Otherwise, it's likely you haven't overloaded enough. First, Get clear on your most important professional goal. This is your own version of Hell Week, your polar bear to fight, your car to lift. Now with a huge professional goal in mind, ask yourself, how could I achieve this goal in one tenth of the time? What would that require from me? The goal is not simply increasing your output, but fundamentally upgrading the capacity of your mind and nervous system by exploding the flow channel. Essentially, an exponential jump in responsibility leads to exponential growth in mental capacity. First, the overload needs to be focused on the core of your professional domain. Don't spread yourself thin trying to overload in all areas of life at once. Stack responsibility and activity within your central field. For example, if you're a software engineer, Take sole ownership of a massive new feature instead of overloading with different unrelated coding projects. Overloading by taking on disparate new projects will dilute the effect. You want one unbelievably heavy backpack, not 10 average weight backpacks. Use overload to go deeper in your profession, not wider. 
Next, avoid setting arbitrary goals with that activity attached. Overload is about doing, not just thinking bigger. Match bold goals with equally bold day-to-day -day efforts. You have to fully immerse yourself. Cancel all non-essential meetings and obligations. Rearrange your life to fully focus on this one make or break goal for a short sprint. For example, when working on a book with my writing partner, it typically takes us a couple of weeks to get a solid draft of one chapter. So we both canceled all of our meetings, booked an expensive hotel, and spent a week getting 10 chapters written. We didn't just set a goal to write faster, we drastically rearranged our lives to make hitting that exponentially increased goal a make or break priority. The high consequences for failing to deliver those 10 chapters in a week would have been enormous in terms of wasted time, money, and momentum. It was about increasing the stakes and responsibility for follow through. Next. Overloading yourself requires an exponential, not incremental approach. Don't gradually add to your workload, like lifting slightly heavier weights at the gym. Instead, blast past your perceived limits. Take on a burden so heavy and unrealistic that it seems absurd to even try. The last rule when considering what to overload is to ask where are you investing the stress you're inevitably gonna feel. Every project comes with stress and preoccupation. So you may as well pick big, meaningful projects to allocate the inevitable stress to. This brings us to the next step of the flow channel explosion process. Phase two is adapt. Deploy every resource and skill you've got to handle the overload phase. Your resilience reservoirs crack open. This is what allows you to have a regulated challenge skills balance under incredibly, inconceivably high new levels of challenge. Consider world record powerlifter Andy Bolton. He had a max deadlift of 800 pounds, but in competition, with the stakes raised, he pulled a shocking 1,003 pounds. Now keep in mind, as part of the adaptation process, due to your resilience reservoirs and the stress ceiling, your stress will remain manageable. As you adapt to the overload, this is the moment you explode the flow channel by making the ceiling for anxiety way higher, which means you can get into flow with much more on your plate. Now finally, it's time to deload. This is the last part of the flow channel explosion process. You've just put yourself through the intensity of the overload phase. You took on challenges and responsibilities multiple times greater than your previous norm. It was uncomfortable and you hit the top of your stress ceiling. But now, after a set period of intensity, say three to six months, you deliberately drop back down to your original load level. Suddenly, everything feels easier. Your original pre-overload responsibilities that used to tax you now feel smooth, feel manageable. You can get vastly more done with less effort and incredibly low levels of stress. It's like trying to lift 100 pounds every day for weeks and then in your next workout trying to lift 10 pounds. The 10 pounds feels as light as a feather. What happens? Well, you've experienced something called cognitive elasticity. Just as muscles grow in size and strength when lifting heavy weights, your mental capacities grow when heavy cognitive loads are placed upon them. Your brain evolved new connections and pathways. Attention centers became more robust. You developed greater emotional resilience and more complex thinking patterns. All of this was necessary just to survive the exponential increase in load and responsibility. But here's the key. Once grown, your brain doesn't relinquish these new capacities when you return to lower load levels. It's permanently stretched like a rubber band. Your fitness for tolerating professional responsibility has permanently increased. A helpful analogy to tie this all together. Imagine loading a heavy backpack onto your shoulders. At first, it feels crushingly heavy. Your muscles ache as you struggle under the weight. But if you keep walking, despite the strain, your muscles and mind adapt. Step by step, the burden lightens. Your legs strengthen, your resolve hardens. Soon, you're trekking smoothly with a pack that initially seemed unbearable. Then you deload, you drop back to normal levels. Suddenly, your original workload feels smooth and easy, but it goes even deeper. It's not just that doing what you were doing feels easy, it's that doing even more than what you were doing now feels easy. For example, a 1,000% increase in workload may cause 300% more stress due to the stress ceiling. Adapt and deload, and that 300% level of stress drops down to nothing. From there, it requires a 2,000% increase in workload to feel stressed again. So overload, adapt, deload. You may not be able to handle what's currently on your plate, but you may be able to handle far more than what's currently on your plate. All kinds of other benefits occur. You gain an updated and expanded identity, increased vision with respect to what you're capable of in your life and business, and of course, a significantly expanded capacity. So you get the goal, and you get the capacity to set and achieve bigger goals faster. For example, the new leader who goes from being an individual contributor to leading a team of 10 suddenly realizes that they could build their own 100 plus person organization. And by the way, you can facilitate this flow channel explosion process for others. If you're a team leader, 
If they voluntarily ask for it, you can elevate a highly ambitious team member very radically, overload them with responsibility, giving them five to 10 years of progress in months. We call this accelerated promotion. For example, an ambitious and highly competent employee of mine told me he wanted to become a CEO. So I let him take over one of my businesses entirely. He went from leading a small team to running an entire business within the span of weeks. While that may have seemed reckless, it was a bet on exploding his flow channel. And you know what? He sent me a Slack the other day reporting a record revenue month. He adapted like crazy. It could have taken him a decade to gradually incrementally build up to bearing that burden because we threw him in just like the Croatian parents throw their kids into the sea, he adapted in a fraction of the time. As you explode the flow channel by overloading, adapting, and deloading, you can make the responsibility easier to bear by working at the right time. There's a daily peak performance window unique to you coded into your biology. Click the video on the screen to learn more.